here, here's what here's what's gonna happen though. Microsoft is gonna do that. It's mm-hmm. gonna be a snap. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else, we come up with Vin Stone, joined every week by Jordan Swing, and back from the dead, resuscitated, for the most Hello. part, is one patron, <laughs> Mateus, and together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. I wonder if that's what gets us, like, immediately flagged on the YouTube live stream. Uh, stream. It is uh, adorable when we get done with the stream. So it's should we should we just start calling it like cocaine Voltron or like oh I'm not just with the pronunciation thing, man no um, <laughs> it's either that or like on Pedro's one shot where it just says fuck 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 <laughs> fuck fuck fucking fuck you fucking gotta fuck, find fuck. the single most demonetizing thing <laughs> it, it's irritating because it's, they, they make you play the guessing game but like I'll go to like set the stream get rid of it and it's just limited to no advertising and I'm like that's no fun. Tell me what it is so we can do more of it. And, um, right. The, the, this, this is the AI apocalypse, right? Is just like the AI has rejected you. Are you going to tell us why? No. Uh, Too bad. Fuck off. Have fun troubleshooting. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine that tech support call yeah. that ticket? And you're like, guy, are you going to tell me what's wrong? The, the, this is why I'm always like when the devs are like, oh, we should use chat GPT to generate the code for this. Like, do you understand what it generates? Are you going to fix it when, when it breaks? No, you write it yourself. You lazy shit. So I'm not going to tell you that I use ChatGPT. Got it. Understood. <laughs> no one told Jordan. Yeah. What's new? What's going on? Um, I had a like sinus drainage, man. I'm like chewing up uh, cough drops and stuff. Been dealing with that all week. Not even like a cold, but I realized like if I ever get like a serious cold, I'd be the biggest baby in the world. Like even with, like a sore throat from this. I'm like, ah, put me out of my misery. I like, just want to jump in front of traffic. But um. Outside of that, playing a little bit of control, and uh, we kind of got DDoSed by uh, Mastodon. That was fun. But if you want to hear that story, uh, go back and listen to the pre pre super shows. And Jordan, you're on like week two or three of your AMD card, man. And has not. Uh, yeah, nothing's exploded seen, so yeah. far. Everything's just running. Have you yeah, run into any works. like huns? Have you had to, no, re- had to visit honestly, Proton honestly, DB? Honestly, no. It, it, it's too boring. That's the problem. Boo. There's not a lot of like. <laughs> You oh, should have no, got no. an Intel Arc, man. You wouldn't yeah, be saying should, that right yeah. now. If, if, if I really wanted to keep things interesting. No, but like, honestly, it's nice. Shit just works. I don't have to worry about installing NVIDIA drivers. I do occasionally have to worry about compiling Mesa. But that's, I mean, that's about equivalent difficulty, honestly. So. Well, you just install Arch. No. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to install. You're already on I gotta Fedora. Install it You're already. Snap. <laughs> Remember, Snap kids, <laughs> aim hatred appropriately. I just, yeah, pro- yeah that one. <laughs> you arch hater. Mm, damn, damn you, arch users. <laughs> Pedro, you're my favorite arch user. How's you, how have you been? Hey, <laughs> technically, yeah, I have Fam- Manjaro famously. on the Pine I was about Pro. to say, man, like in a contest who has more versions of arch installed in their house, you win. Yeah. Yeah. I have yes, exactly one. <laughs> there we go. It's the Pine Book Pro. Yeah. No, you have two because uh, no, there's the Steam Deck too. So. Oh, oh yes, the Steam Deck. Oh. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Steam OS three is Arch based technically. Uh, not not, not Gamma uh, though. It's different. It, <laughs> it's very clearly not Arch, but it totally is. Now I've uh, I too had a cold over the past. Uh, well, everybody said like some type of like nasal thing going on, like just didn't general meat space i'm like what's going on guys yeah no uh the, it was like my entire nose was completely blocked off on monday i woke up and i couldn't breathe out of my nose at all so i got up i just <laughs> like, blew Nori, my nose and it was it's green not anymore like the amount of stuff that came out of my nose it was like green Ooh. You, you, you ever get one of those like <laughs> you blow your nose and just the mucus never stops and you're like yeah how do i have this much fluid in my head like <laughs> Doesn't make sense. And then you start to feel a little lightheaded because you've just been pushing out all of the oxygen from your brains. Like, okay, I, that's enough blowing my nose now. Well, my nose so, was yeah. running like a little bit. And I was like, the magic of a little bag of cough drops. Because I'm like, all right, let's get to deal with this so I can talk. And um, so I was like chilling out on my fainting couch in the living room. And I'm sitting there just like, don't do anything. Just lay, watch YouTube videos. And I had like the roll of tissue. And I'm like, okay. 
just in case, because this damn thing won't stop leaking or I need to blow my nose and we're not doing anything. And I get up and I come back and I'm like, it's amazing. It's amazing how that, even put it in your head, you know, got the couch, got a coffee table, got a tablet, got a roll of tissue with a bunch of little wads around it. You're like, that looks like a masturbation dungeon. No, it does. Yeah. <laughs> not, that, not, that, that, that's, no, that's nay, Jordan, nay, not when there's the little bag of cough drop. I'm like, oh, <laughs> listen, I like to be able to breathe while I orgasm. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not about the chokey strokey. I don't know about the rest of y'all. <laughs> not, not a the big old, fan of the asphyxia wank either. No. <laughs> yeah. one, one hand on the Adam's banana, one hand on the Adam's apple. You know, The I'm Adam's honest. banana. Much like the horse. I don't want to talk about the horse's banana. That's going to get us really, really demonetized on YouTube. It's the steam. Speaking of horse cocks, let's talk about steam decks because those things are related. Um, yeah, so we were talking about it last week. They announced the Steam Deck OLED. Uh, much like the Switch OLED, everyone was very, very excited. And if you want to buy one, it's available now. But you're going to need to be in the U.S. or Canada. You need to have an account with good standing. And you need to have made a purchase before November 2023. And only one unit per purpose or uh, per account, which is clearly to stop the scalpers. Although, you know, a lot of the scalpers worth their salts will have multiple verified accounts in good standing. Because honestly, it's not that hard to do. There's enough Steam games that go on sale that like you could with spend, spending about 15, 20 bucks, you could get like maybe 15, 20 verified Steam accounts in good standing. But still, it's 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 uh, putting the kibosh on, on the eBay game. Ven was doing that research earlier. And like, oh, yeah, it's, it's bad. Judging by the number of listings on eBay, uh, it's not foolproof, but it's effective. <laughs> so there's like, um, the, the the link that Ven put in the notes, there's like 500 listings on uh, on eBay. So yeah, that's, that's pretty good. That's compared to the GPU 1, apocalypse. $1,128.91. What the? Who, who would buy that? Who would buy that? <laughs> yeah, you say that. You say that. And this is the exact thought that I had earlier this week. And I'm like, what is, like, would drive this outside of just FOMO? But more importantly, why is it continuing? You know, these cells are still being made, even though later that day, Valve's like, yo, we, we still got some of these decks left, kids. I mean, just come buy them for us. But people are still completing listings on eBay. 107 are up right now where people have bought not, it. Not, not that one. <laughs> no, no, no. Nope, nobody was going to buy it, uh, this, whatever this was supposed to be. But the um, Steam OLED, uh, you know, the special edition is going for about eight, 900 bucks right now, which is down from like $1,200 yesterday after Valve made the announcement of like, we got some more in the back. Don't worry about it. But I did like think to myself, Who's buying these even after that announcement? Why wouldn't you just go to Valve, pick it up? You probably got a Valve. You got a Steam account if you're thinking about getting a Steam Deck, or if you don't, maybe one or two people. But then I was thinking, what about everybody in the UK? What about everybody in Space Australia? Mm -hmm. In the U, and like, this is the only way I can buy a deck because fuck us, that's why. Yeah, Australia and yeah. New Zealand uh, still can't buy even the regular deck Sweden. because Valve's just not. But, <laughs> but so here, here's the thing, though. For Australia specifically, would it still be cheaper to just buy the scalp deck for $12,000 than the actual Australia tax of buying, <laughs> buying it just straight up? Depends on the shipping, I guess. <laughs> we, like, I mean, like, look at through the lens of like EU to US conversion right there even with shipping and adding in you're probably not paying too much, like unless you really get hit on that or uh duty mm. yes <laughs> handling fees and that yeah uh like the shipping itself uh from like ebay or amazon it's usually around for something the size of the deck is like 30 40 pounds here so yeah, it would be the uh, the tax and the fees. Oh, free shipping. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, to the U.S. <laughs> I'm just looking through these. Like, okay, you know, these are mad people right now that are like uh, that paid a thousand dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. Like right. when 
and it's like eight or nine hundred boxes to go in price today. And I'm sure tomorrow. Oh, poor Someone buddy. paid thirteen hundred <laughs> plus twenty dollars shipping. <laughs> oh. R.I.P. Oh. Buddy. R.I.P. What? All right. Well, you're just a bad human being if you're charging yeah. shipping on your Steam Deck and like scalping. Oh, dude. I don't know. Well, it's like, I had to pay for shipping for mine, so you have to pay it for when I sell it back to you. <laughs> yeah, recoup my costs. Man, like, li- literally the worst human beings. <sighs> you know, there was probably a business case where, like, once things get settled down, maybe somebody's already doing it for, uh, like, calling up Valve and be like, yo, how about you send me some decks and I send them to all the places that you ain't? I think someone's already tried that. <laughs> I, it, it can't, because again, they're Australia, New Zealand, and a few bunch of other like countries. Like above actually. board, you know, not like. We're, we're yeah, not, no, we're, we're, and we're not you have make, the one company that's doing like the entire Southeast I'm Asia. I'm not going to put like three Steam Decks in a condom and get you to swallow it, right? <laughs> well, no, you, they have to go up your butt. They're not going to go down your throat. <laughs> you but yeah, no, fit. there's. That one company Listen, that's I, doing I know from experience <laughs> that's handling the uh, the Steam Deck sales in um, Japan, Korea, China. The, the one company, yeah, the the, is, the 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 yeah, they're they're in Hawaii too. The they're they're yeah. doing the entire Pacific region. Mm. And we we talked we talked about it a while ago, and I'm also spacing on the name, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. The, so clearly, someone's already tried that, and there, there's one. We have an example of one. <laughs> <laughs> but again, this is this is also the attempt of Valve trying to break into like the Asian market, right? Because that's, it's, that's it. You could not, it's not necessarily just logistics, but the hard thing is going to be dealing with RMAs and support in other countries, mm-hmm. All right? And like you're not going to like then that gets super complicated when you have to call up Valve and you just get one off eBay and you're like it's dead and they're like we didn't sell you that. Fortunately, you can buy parts for it these days, so. right? There is that. Uh, Let's stay on the Steam Deck topic and everyone's favorite cloud gaming service. (laughs) Yes, getting... uh, That's been one of the things that keeps being brought up is people wanting to play the Xbox cloud games uh, on the Steam Deck. And you may remember Microsoft at one point, a couple of uh, employees got together and made an unofficial way to do it. And uh, Stephen Tatio, uh, a reporter who's worked for a number of different um, video game centric publications like your Kotaku's. Uh, he, uh, and he's one of the better ones. Um, he, uh, much like a bunch of other journalists and YouTubers, got an interview with Lawrence Yang and a few other people at Valve because of the new Steam Deck OLED. And uh, he asked the question so, getting Xbox gaming uh, to run on the Steam Deck is cumbersome. You can't just download an amp. And uh, Lawrence Yang turns around and says, it's not my department. Yeah, that that sounds like Lawrence Yang just told you to go ask Microsoft about that one. (laughs) That's, uh, yeah, that's very much not on Valve. Uh, That particular ball needs to come a rolling from the Microsoft. You're making it sound like it's a big ordeal, man. Microsoft even has a support (laughs) page for Xbox Cloud Gaming in Microsoft Edge with the Steam Deck. And I, I do want to quote, for gamers interested in Xbox Cloud Gaming Beta and Microsoft Edge, because those two go right together like horses and glue, baby. Uh, step one, grab a keyboard and a dribble, then 20 steps after that, and you're done. All you have to do is uh, install a community packaged version of Edge. So don't worry about that. And um, Microsoft, just just release an app on Steam. Like, Flat up. Yeah. Do it. In, instead of being a community made version of Edge, just release a flat back called Make it not Xbox required. Cloud. No or Edge. And done. How about or, not making well, Edge a hard dependency, Microsoft? Fix? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, that's just not going to happen. That's, just, that's well, Microsoft. I mean, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, um, I mean, we, we, we just saw it with uh, Discord, right? Like, the uh, Discord flat back is now officially uh, sanctioned by Discord proper. You could do. Basically the same shit with uh, with like Edge or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. use the community package, but like you know, where Microsoft gives it the signal of, re- of approval and put it on and the yeah, Steam just Store. Install it, discover because like I honestly I thought it was going to be a lot less 
complicated than that. I thought it was just, oh yeah, install Edge from KDE Discover and that's it. But yeah, no, no the, the, there's some launch codes. And yeah, again, Microsoft could totally make that official and just have all of the launch codes and all of the procedures included in one singular flat pack script that installs everything it needs in one click of the discover store they could do that but they don't want to oh. Oh. see but oh. here, here, here's what here's what's gonna happen though microsoft is gonna do that it's mm-hmm. gonna be a snap oh. <laughs> that's about snap, as realistic snap only. they're authy style yeah. yeah oh it wouldn't make canonical very happy for sure <laughs> listen sometimes microsoft woke up and they just chose violence you yeah. know that's <laughs> It would probably be the sing, uh, the single most popular snap ever. Very, very quickly. Uh, it wouldn't be a Herculean effort to make a Linux native version of whatever Edge is, and uh, there, there, on, there is a Linux there is there already is. Yeah. Yeah. Finish the sentence. Put it on the Steam Store. You know, not Edge itself, but something that it's a snap. You download it; doesn't cost anything, and it just runs that like that the engineering hours in that would be relatively trivial i would like to believe maybe maybe not but at the end of the day i want to peek into that alternate timeline where like microsoft didn't lose their damn minds with the windows store back in the day where they're like hey if you're gonna sell games on windows uh you you gotta buy them through us we get the cut and valve was like so this linux thing huh (laughs) Yeah, the the big motivator, uh, which was why Valve even started looking at Apple uh, to get away from uh, just being dependent on Windows. And then Apple going, nah, you got to go. Everything needs to come through us. So, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let's let's have a look at Linux then. (laughs) I mean, it makes sense. Uh, But yeah, I'd like to take a look at that universe because like there has to be some reluctance on Microsoft's side of like, why would you have to pick Linux, man? Come on. Come back here. Go, Gabe and himself good. said, "That's your fault, Microsoft." So, <laughs> Tim Sweeney said, "It's also your fault, Microsoft." But we're not going to go anywhere because we. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm too stupid to figure out how Linux works, so we're just going to stay with Windows. Well, uh, for those of you who also can't figure out how Linux work, but do want to uh, <laughs> attempt to run something that's not Windows, you might want to uh, buy yourself a Google laptop, one of them uh, Chromebooks. And then after a while, you might say, wow, I'm really bored just watching YouTube videos. I want to play some video games. What are my options? Well, lo and behold, ProtonDB has some uh, good news for you. They have added a compatibility tracker for um, Chromebooks, um, very similar to how they have one for the Steam Deck where that just shows the, the verified status. They have their own thing now for handling whether or not it runs on a Chromebook. And they have a, uh, they have a list of games Twilight Town, man. Um, they, they they have a list of games that are uh, that are like ready to go for a Chromebook, and it's all like Yu Gi Oh, Magic Gathering, and Vampire Survivors. And you know, I, I guess it's going to be uh, your mileage may vary type thing because the uh, the hardware variety on Chromebooks are a lot more diverse than say your Steam Deck, which is you have you have your crappy Steam Deck, and then you have the new hot Steam Deck that just runs circles around the old one and makes the other one completely completely invalidated um but yeah here, here you're you, you can have like chromebooks that have uh, dedicated gpus integrated gpus kind it's kind of a bit of a mess so uh yeah I, take, take it with a grain of salt yeah no the, the like the effort that google's doing to get steam running it at least controls since it's all running in a virtualized environment anyway it at least controls the software disparity Yes, that there's less uh, of that integration and control of the hardware platform like they have with the Steam Deck, obviously, but the software is all going to be the same. So it's far less likely that people will have issues with different distros like they would on the uh, on the desktop. So I guess that this is, all, this is, is all the Steam app through uh, Crouton, right? Yeah. Or is it- yeah. yeah, it's not crouton but it's similar to that it's the their that containerization virtualization close enough to where does. people would still argue with you over the internet about it um yes. <laughs> but you do have to imagine anybody with a chromebook um you know what you got 
you got reasonable expectations, right? You do. You know, you, you know no, what uh, showed up and like the school gave you. Like you don't expect to be able to run Cyberpunk 2077 at, you know, 4K with ray tracing enabled. You know you're going to have to disable but that I ray should, tracing. damn it. I should. Damn it, Google. This is your fault. How dare you tell me this $80? Wait, that's probably on the high end these days. This right? $40 Chromebook. Whether... <laughs> Let's listen. I don't, I don't, I don't let reality, sh- reality shade my expectations in the least. <laughs> I think this is handy simply because most people seriously coming in, you know, if you do have a Chromebook, maybe, you know, it was issued to you by school or whatever. Maybe you made this personal choice and you're walking into it like, I wonder. And it's like a bonus thing when you say like, oh, cool. Like, should I even bother playing around with trying to get this to work? And now we have that on Steam DB. I'm like, oh, okay. Maybe yeah. if I do this and this, or you just get that confirmation. Game X works. I, right. I can mm-hmm. kill time at, at school while I'm waiting in between classes or whatever. The place Survivor, Survivor, Survivor is a very good use case for that. Yes. Couple of new games this week. And by couple, I mean one. Uh, the one which a uh, developer very kindly sent us some keys. The game is That's even what out that yet. was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's for uh, Spacecraft Tactics. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it do, set the keys on Curator Connect. Thank you so very much. It is a, uh, self-described 2D turn-based tactical, uh, tactical space game. Uh, I, I tried to say technical and there it goes again, tactical and technical at the same time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, save Pedro, the, the last English rebel. word for that is tentacle. <laughs> I would make an argument. That's probably the Japanese word for it, but <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the, save the last rebel outpost in the campaign. Develop a strategy, execute it in tactical battles, and micromanage your ship. It, yeah, that, um, I'm looking at the, the trailer and it's just, that, that, that is someone's cup of tea. Not mine, but someone's going to really love this game. <laughs> so here, here's, the, here's the thing that, like, tickles me about it. It's got that online PvP and it's got that on- online co-op. Yes. So... <laughs> yes please i want to try this out like uh yeah i know we're gonna have one of those violent nobody knows what the hell they're doing offs yeah absolutely <laughs> but but that, that that's the fun of like any given linux gamecast stream oh it is it is um yeah um single player online pvp lan online co-op lan co-op i mean this looks well, like it's like, gonna be kind of interesting it's gonna come out on the 27th the, the, this game has online online multiplayer this one yes Literally, like all, job, all the racing Stephen. games, Good job. All, all, all the fighting games. No, local co-op only. No, the the, the spaceship, the MS Paint art spaceship game gets the online multiplayer. <laughs> like, come on, people. Dragons are expensive, man, or something. I don't know, middleware. Spaceships are expensive. <laughs> right. So you probably heard about this next bit of news. And a little bit of an update for a game that's been out for 25 years. Half-Life. Anniversary update, the same game you played in 1998, restored, augmented, and revitalized, and uh, yeah, man, you can definitely get your first-gen head crabs on your deck. That's kind of the big news with this one, and it's absolutely free to play and free to own, so if you somehow do not have the original Half-Life on Steam, go get it. It's yours. No uh, takesy-backsies on that. And they've done a couple of interesting things with this release, like the one that caught me when I was messing around in the menu. Okay, in the menu, they brought back the original main menu. I was like, I haven't seen that in forever. But there's also a software renderer on Linux now, which I was immediately disappointed by because it's limited to 900p, and I wanted to see how many FPSs I could get at UHD using the software. Now, now those dreams have been denied. Another thing that made me smile a bit, with well, the game being free, you know, until Monday, I think, there were over a thousand people in deathmatch running around, uh, just having fun. And I jumped in and I wrecked some noobs. It was a great time. And uh, still can't play it on a Mac, though. So if you got your hopes up, they're like, they updated it and it's going to be 64, but nope. Uh, no love there. However, what are your thoughts on this, gentlemen? I mean, the UI changes, input changes, all this is going to be in our um, show notes. One thing I thought. Might have been like just that little bit of extra cool, you know, considering this game is uh, 25 years old, is like just completely open sourcing the damn thing. That would be cool. The, Wouldn't that they've be already neat? released the gold SRC source. So, 
I guess but they like, don't uh, want like, to. Like a, like a, GP, like a GPL yeah. or BSD license, like Half-Life 1. Oh, so like, I wonder how much it, well, there, there, so there's there's a lot of Quake in there, so I wonder how much overlap between. Uh, oh, then they have between, to release between, the, between, like, uh, the code, code for Quake. And that'll never happen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Not with Zenimax doing everything that is like, it was like, yeah. well, how can we get that back closed sourced again? Night Dive, what are you up to? Hey, remake this. No, it needs more ice skates. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, maybe, maybe yeah, they'll use the Quake Live engine. It. We're not sharing that. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they had that documentary too. That was that was a fun little watch. Yes, uh, <laughs> I, I I got called out at like minute fifteen somehow. <laughs> yeah, but uh, what happened? Uh, no, they're they're they're, they're, they're talking they're talking about like uh, how how they came across like um how, how, they, how they came up with the design for Gordon Freeman. Like originally, we were just inspired by like big beefy bearded linux programmers i'm like what the fuck and, uh, <laughs> based on clearly, clearly they were I thinking about me in 1998 oh. you know the the <laughs> nine-year-old child jordan yes absolutely <laughs> there i i am gordon freeman i i am jordan freeman thank you no, i have to much. think like who who remaining at valve was still around to like tango with this code base right like that's an interesting project. I don't think it was a day. remaining. I think it was one of the newer people that went. How about we just updated to make it work properly on the Steam Deck? You yeah, know, our I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that was a prompting from Gabe. Is like, ah, uh, yeah, we should probably get this working on. But on considering this is like Half Life One, I wonder if Gabe had to like QA <laughs> so he like get yeah, some he had feedback. To like crack his fingers. Yeah, like, he's like, shit. Do I remember this thing? Twenty. Yeah, like, the, the- the last person to touch this code was, was he, Gabe. So. Was he sitting there bitching about the value of commenting shit correctly? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 25 years later, you're like, I don't remember a goddamn thing that I did. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I very much enjoyed the, uh, the documentary of the, them going, we were running out of money, we were running out of time, Sierra mm. wasn't going to give us any money because Half-Life was originally published by Sierra. Yes. Mm. Um, and so they, they were basically going, okay, we, we need to get this wrapped up and shipped and it's going to be late. We're not going to be paid for it, uh, for a while. So yeah, no, it was but like the, the, the whole process of like, they designed a bunch of cool technical stuff. And then at the end, they're like, we don't have a game though. We need to like How do push we this all into like, together. A, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, uh, the, the Steam Deck update, um, when they first released it, movement didn't work <laughs> at all. You couldn't get either digital or analog movement with the uh, left analog stick, none. The mouse and the right analog stick movement, that was fine. It was just no, the, the movement. Now, go ahead and interrupt. This is why it's so great to go into Deathmatch right now, because a lot of these people <laughs> are playing on their Steam Decks over Wi-Fi, and you can just murderate them. Yes. But the second update that they released um, on the 17th, it fixed controller support. So uh, I did go to the forums and I saw a bunch of threads of people bitching. It's like, ah, oh, this is a really bad remaster. And quite a few people in that thread pointing out, uh, this isn't a remaster. This is an update. It's literally the exact same game, just updated. And uh, to your um, now, now, to your now, point I, earlier, I, I, I will say though to, to to that to that point, the article says the same game you played restored, augmented, and revitalized. That could that could be interpreted as deliberately they made not some, remastered. Yes, <laughs> yeah, but still, that, that 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 is some vague wording. You 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 can you you can you can, you can it's an understandable mistake. But anyways, go. But no, uh, Ven was talking about the uh, the software render earlier. Uh, I did try it. The highest resolution you can get to in 169 is 1366 by 768. Uh, and the frame rate on the 5800X 3D was uh, capped at 100 FPS. So you probably need some uh, console commands to unlock okay, it. Okay, yes. The, the, the correct thing I should have said is like find out what the frame rate cap for Half-Life 1 was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Uh, 100. 100. <laughs> uh, at a, uh, uh, if you set it to OpenGL, it goes up to whatever at least 144 it was doing it just fine but uh it probably goes to whatever your v-sync is on your monitor all right i mean hey free game worst case scenario yeah. right <laughs> go play it uh, if you haven't i recommend black mesa if you want a uh, more recent because you know to the point not necessarily it's not a remaster in the sense of like 
I would consider Black Mesa a remaster, like re envisioning, like everything's been updated, new models, new graphics, and new sounds. Some, some of the levels have been truncated. Like, right. So, yeah, the, the, this they, they, this they has got, got some new gameplay. levels in it, a couple of new models, but all the pixels are like OG. You know, it's like, and it's still I do, open I do to like, the monitor. Yeah, I do like uh, that they say that they now consider this anniversary version of Half Life to be the definitive version and one they will support going forward. Therefore, they'll be reducing the visibility of Half Life Source on the Steam Store. They're still keeping it around because there's a bunch of games and mods that use uh, Half Life Source materials. Do you want to be really dope if they had added a co op mode? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there, is, there is a Half Life co op campaign, but it's a weird one. Or, or better integration with like setting up servers. And they, I, listen, I can nitpick it day in and day out, but we need to talk about creatures and the number seven. Ah, yes. The decks of could. Um, it's, yeah. Creatures of the Seventh Plague is the major update for Caves of Could. If you uh, are a bit of a roguelike buff, you've heard of Caves of Could. It is perhaps the most in depth and yet completely inscrutable roguelike that people actually enjoy playing. Uh, I, I, it's one of those games that I wish I had the time to get into it. But I don't, so I just watch from the sidelines. And uh, the new update, the big thing for us here anyway, is the Steam Deck integration. They've added, uh, they already had a Linux version, but now they've just added proper um, controller support. And you can play it entirely on the Steam Deck. Everything is readable. Everything is absolutely um, supported. So it is, it's very good to see. and. Seriously, <laughs> I when I'm old and retired, if I'm still alive, uh, Caves of Could is probably one of those games for me. As, as opposed to Dead and Retired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I have to be alive to play the video games unless someone figures out. Uh, well, no, what no, was no, the, uh, don't, don't under, undersell. Like, we don't know what state <laughs> necro necromancy is going to be in. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. Let's listen, if, if you got a line on a good there, uh, necromancer, there, there hook me up. Dozens I've, I've been looking for of one. necromancy startups right now. So yeah. don't sell them short, man. Yeah. <laughs> the AI assisted necromancy. Oh, God. <laughs> No, I, I just, I just want to bring back, like, dudes in leather pants with skulls. Can we just do that? No, no, I'm just like, okay, everybody, put on your elements. Okay, Google. <laughs> okay, Google, raise the dead. <laughs> raise that corpse over there. <laughs> You're out of third level spell slots. Fuck you! <laughs> I right, need to update uh, my payment information. Damn it. Yeah. Paid a, paid a you don't have that's enough magic points. Would you like to buy some? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's that's the John. That's the John Richitello special. Is you're out of mana. <laughs> Would you like to spend a dollar for an extra mana point? <laughs> yeah, a dollar gives you ten magic points, but oh, you need twelve no. in order then to cast a like spell. <laughs> the little hel helpful helper. You're like, shut up, necro clippy. Oh yeah, like the, the fucking demon clippy. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like clippy, but it's like the spelling's all fucked up. Right. <laughs> and like Eldritch. Yes. So it's all go text clippy, so, yes. <laughs> someone make that game, please. Thank you. <laughs> that, that 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 is all. Um I guess I guess we're 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 done talking about Caves of Quid. We yeah. got we got some mm -hmm. uh, news to talk about. Some new zoo for the Yuzu, our favorite Switch emulator. They have an update for October 2023. It's midway through November, so that's about on time. Um the big one here is they got Super Mario Wonder uh, playable. Uh, it has some weird V-Sync behavior where it alternates between two times and or two triple and double buffered V-Sync, depending on where you are. And the emulator did not handle that super well. Also, apparently it vibrates a lot, like a lot, a lot to the point where it saturated the Yuzu vibration subsystem. So they had to do make them, uh, they had to make vibration asynchronous for the Quick to question for you, Jordan. What? How much of that do you think was intentional? I I don't know. <laughs> if, if the, I I I, rem I remember there was there was like apps on the on the on the Switch store. It's like yes, massager. It will just yeah, make yeah, your yeah, controller. What, what I'm talking vibrate. about is it didn't, <laughs> Nintendo kind of going out of their way a little bit. I'm like let, let's well, make this as hard as humanly possible. Oh, prop. Pro oh, a absolutely. Yeah, to to fuck around with the emulators because yeah. They're getting because they're getting their ass kicked. Like, yeah, the the people who aren't making the console are making software that runs their software way better. Better, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, 
they 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 do uh they do warn uh they do have some uh, driver updates as well they're warning that um nvidia users there's some weird vulcan behavior in the 540 and 550 drivers so they should stick to 530 for best performance and i we talked about the the deprecation of um vega and polaris on the amd driver side i guess one thing we didn't realize is that that also affects windows here on linux we got like mesa so our drivers don't suck uh but on windows land yeah that's that's it for those guys too bad yeah so the, sad the, you if yuzu you know the emulator people are mourning the passing of polaris and vega from the proprietary drivers that is a significant enough impact and yeah when you look everything from the rx 480 when it, that first came out up to the rx 590 and a lot of the APUs all, all, all that of had, the APUs on the on yeah the, that had uh, Vega graphics. Fuzzers. It's that is a fat chunk of uh, people's systems, and yeah, like Jordan already said, on Linux, as long as Rad V is called Rad V, you will probably be supported, and you'll get the Vulcan and Mesa. The Gallium driver will probably continue to support OpenGL just fine until they put a newer major revision out that changes the name and it drops the older cards so red v you're probably okay for a few years rod, rod v rod, rod v. v or like y. rad v 2.0 yeah <laughs> put some extra rad, numbers in i, I want to give the uh yuzu somebody stretch for the joke good on you sir or madam epic smash to sleep over what they'd connect <laughs> yes um, long term though, they have some cool stuff happening as well. They're working on native code execution in ARM because the Switch is a ARM device. Maybe you don't need to emulate a bunch of those syscalls because you also have a uh, ARCH64 CPU on board. What's going and on that's this picture. This looks like a. Well, that looks like a. Yeah, Do- a Donkey physical. Kong is inspecting yeah, what's Do- on the bottom of Kirby. Doctor Kong. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it's looking up Kirby's uh, other hole. Cloaca. <laughs> I hope it's a cloaca. Oh, th- there, there's no, there's no other hole. It goes in Kirby's mouth and it vanishes. It oh. gets annihilated like fucking antimatter. Um, is that what they yeah, uh, <laughs> It's po- Pokemon. Hey That's guys. what's inside Kirby. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the native code execution work also gives them some better insight on the x86 side because, you know, now, now they understand what the actual like machine code is being generated for ARM. They can apply that to uh, x86 side. So all in all, pretty, pretty good update from these guys. Work is chugging along. Games are fucking running. Play Super Mario Odyssey. Apparently, there's going to be some big gains coming for um, Android and ARM with the native code execution stuff. So that's going to be really cool as well. I did see and, that uh, Super Paper Mario release this week for the Switch. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mario RPG, I think it was. Or whatever it was, yeah. And uh, the glowing review of somebody talking, like, yeah, it's only a little bit chuggy. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a remake of a Super Nintendo and, and game. This was said with no joke, no, not, no self awareness whatsoever. This was like it's, it's only a little bit of slowdown. You guys, this is when a great you have one. Uh, what was it? Um, the Pokemon game that came out in a completely busted state. Scarlet and Violet. Th- that's yeah. still not fixed, by the way. That's that's that, still all busted. They they, they released uh, they released a fifty dollar DLC for it that did not fix it. <laughs> Yeah, when you have examples like that, yeah, I can see them praising the non-chuggy bits, but at the same time, you have, like, when the new Zelda game came out, they won because uh, there were people who leaked the game before it came out for, you know, the rest of the market. They won, the game was already running on Yuzu on the Steam Deck at double the frame rate that it did on the Switch. Yeah, and yeah, that, their- listen to me, this is why, Nintendo, I want you to go back and tie the, um, FPS into the physics hard. <laughs> Thirty or bust. Eat shit. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, no, they are Japanese developers. So, I, I uh, want that, to see messed is... up Link at 120 <laughs> FPS, man. Just like. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you can just go down to California, go down to Strider's place, you can see that. <laughs> I remember when uh, near replicant 1.2 mm-hmm. came out. Uh, the frame rate was tied to the physics. Uh, so unless you were running a multiple of 30, 
uh, you were getting some interesting behavior. I was running the game at 144, because 144, <laughs> and the game was running significantly faster, which meant I could get through, like, like the planes outside of town mm -hmm. in about two minutes while watching someone on YouTube take about five minutes taking the exact same round. I was like, <laughs> sometimes that's good, but sometimes that's really bad. I think it was like Killer is Dead is like this brilliant, kind of artsy third person shooter type game that. I've always wanted to play, but it's like locked at 30 FPS and you got to do like, you know, it's like Unreal Engine 2.3 or maybe 3.04. I don't, I don't think it's three yet. And, but it has that issue where the physics are tied to the frame rate, but there's so many like little mini cute quick time events. When you put it on 60, then they have all these other physics changes that they've done to the INI file to try to compensate for that somewhat. And it's not quite there. And it's always upset me. And it's a me problem because I just don't want to play it at 30 FPS. But yeah, don't don't do that, people. But just great work with the user team. I mean, how's user running on the deck? Have either of you uh, bothered still, to do Still that? haven't gotten around to doing nope. that yet. Yeah. I, you, I, I don't have any Nintendo games. How can you try? try? You were <laughs> letting down the moniker that, that of the I filthy. To play. Oh, really? Yeah, honestly, no. Uh, are, are you scared? Do you, do you, are, are you worried about tasting it? You're like, Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, tasting the full 60 FPS on like, the Switch huh. games and then looking at the Switch and going, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> right. I, I, yeah, I was like, I need you to purchase the games right. so that I can copy them over to my fucking, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Like, I got really soured on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet because I just saw what a shit state it released. And mm -hmm. I'm like, is there anything else on the Switch that, no, all this stuff is on Steam. I can just play it on my Steam Deck. But, I mean, it's sad to see that. We're like, no, this is okay. These crackheads are going to deal with it. I mean, same yeah, as no we choice. talked about, yeah, City Skylines, man. They're like, these crackheads deal with it. We might fix it. We might not. With Nintendo, we're like, what you going to do? Yeah, give, give us another $80. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, hey. Shadow. 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 What evil lurks within the heart? Of your NVIDIA the darks card, of hearts, the shadow knows. Shadow the, the hedgehog. <laughs> We've always, uh, I don't want to say not everybody, like most sane people have probably never sat down and been like, man, I want to record this video game that I'm playing to put it on YouTube. Or like maybe, you know, now everybody's uh, streaming, but back in my day, uh, that's what you did. You know, you made some YouTube videos and you wanted to record your video games and capturing games with just like minimum overhead has always been an issue on Linux. It just has uh, since the beginning of forever. I was there day one, man, you know, when the Linux first showed up with the game capture. And uh, back then I used a program called GLC, which itself was like a game capture hardware, which could leverage your hardware to capture on NVIDIA only at the time. Uh, another program called Yukon, which was even older. Now, to translate that into Windows speak, it was basically fraps for Linux, which you had to use a command line. So... You know, it was kind of out of the reach for a lot of people, but it did work and good results. Keeping in that tradition, Shadowcast, GPU accelerated screen and audio recording, low latency, low overhead, GPU accelerated. You know it. You can do it. Still no GUI. So that's going to cut down a large part of the audience and they really should pick a better example for the game capture here because that looks like something we were talking about 240p streaming. JPEG compression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't give you that much space on the GitHub page. I don't. <laughs> Pretty easy to use. Um, you know, if you don't want to deal with the overhead, that is OBS. And I, like, I, I'm going to have a hard time telling you, like, if you just want to record some gameplay, OBS is good enough these days. Download it, install it, like, get the window in, get the audio in, and just go that way. But if you want to be old school about it, and Jordan, you make a point, this uses the NV frame buffer. Yes. Which is only enabled by default on quadros and whatever the hell quadros are called these days the a series yeah that a for ass Arr, give us money Ampere, but there's a twelve hundred dollar one on the wish list <laughs> yes buy me one. but yeah you uh they, they say you can you can obtain a key via various methods or uh, patch drivers. that's yeah use the nvidia patch utility there's a github repo for that it's very simple to do i used to do this with um OBS, but OBS, once it moved to EGL, it no longer supports this. So, uh, yeah, this is the what? only way. Yeah. 
Oh, I was gonna say one one other weird thing about this guy is it's built on pipe wire too, which is uh, that that, yeah. that one stood out. That that kind of caught me out of it. What I saw, I was like, wait a minute, are you sure? And I went reading, and uh, lo and hold, B man, because requiring pipe wire is kind of a strange dependency chain when you're dealing with uh like other hard requirements, aka X11 and NVIDIA GPUs. Like, that, hmm. Yeah, like X and NVIDIA, that, that that makes sense. The two very much go hand in hand. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so it is unfortunate that it only supports X, but it's not unexpected given the NVIDIA requirement. Yes. <laughs> oh, this is, the, it but, gets flipped it, around it, like that, though, very strangely. Uh, what was it? Uh, the digital audio workstation from PreSonus had a very weird requirement of, like, it needs Wayland. Absolutely has to have Wayland. And what does it use for the sound server? Jack. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, Jack works fine with Wayland. It's yep. um No 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 Pedro. Not not Pulse Audio not Pulse Audio. Uh not Pipewire module Jack. No, 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 no. I don't work with that motherfucker. No, no, no. I mean actual Jack. Yeah, Hard Jack. I, I was Regular using Jack. uh Wayland with actual Jack on the old um Me too. Um Apogee. <laughs> because that required jack otherwise it'd get weird uh noises in my ears but yeah that that jack works just fine with um with whalen it's uh um, try explaining that to the internet <laughs> honestly a lot oh, of people okay. already kind of sort of get it at least the people who i got matter. evidence to the fucking contrary for both of you <laughs> because i've dealt with these fucking emails since i posted that video 1200 years old. Yes yes, yes 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 i saw some of the youtube comments dude that's tip of the fucking iceberg <laughs> nah, but, that, that can't be helped yeah uh, but no like having something like shadow play that isn't stuck behind windows or a geforce experience account that that's very good and, and people have been asking for something like shadow play on linux for a long long time without having to use obs because yes obs lets you do some of the stuff that shadow play does but like Ven already said you have that extra bit of overhead because you have to be running the entire obs or yeah open broadcast studio as it were so it is it's that's very good to see but uh nvidia that will and support get on well, it well speaking speaking <laughs> of the nv fbc thing one thing one thing overall that i think has been sort of like a story situation is like hardware hardware encoder access on in or on linux because like yeah you got to jump through some hoops if you want amf on uh if you want amf on linux and you're stuck using the prop, uh, or they're open source. You're, you're stuck using AMD's drivers, and like s same thing here, where you need to like patch a driver or like provide a key. I really wish like that would be just resolved outright under Linux. How so? Yeah. I don't know. Just ma make making it work right off the bat, not having arbitrary limitations in your driver to like have to pass keys to access but features, Jordan, or in the case of the AMD make side, money? like actually just exposing <laughs> it, right? But artificial hardware limit, I mean, software restrictions to hardware, like that's brand yeah. new. <laughs> like Intel locking cores in firmware unless you pay them extra money to unlock the other yeah. cores. Oh, hang on. Let me put some more ECC memory in my Intel box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, you, you no, bought that's, the Xeon? That... Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, hey, I, I won't overclock it, too. Oh, right. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be an extra thousand dollars. Get to buy the gold edition. You mean twelve thousand dollars? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For all cores, if you want all core overclocking, yeah. <laughs> dude, I don't know. Um, I'm curious. Like, let let us know. So, does some feedback. Let us comment if you are still like capturing stuff. I'm, I'm assuming everybody just uses OBS th these days. Like, on Linux, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, I do have questions like what people are using for um, 4K capture. Hmm. Like uh, hardware-wise? Yeah, right. Like my solution to that was to throw a $500 hardware appliance at it. <laughs> at that, that's probably what a lot of people do, which is have the second computer. <laughs> oh, I do it on the same computer. <laughs> yeah, just get, it's get, just get a lot easier yeah. if you have two computers, one to play the 4K thing and the other one to record the 4K thing. What if I only want one to record like three and a half K? Then you, you got to get a 970. A, a NVIDIA uh, GTX 970. <laughs> <laughs> let, 
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, SDL has been a blessing, sprinkling moon magic. Um, it's changed the way we're able to play games. Like, we expect things that 10 years ago you didn't expect, like controller support. Or it not shutting off the one monitor when you launch the game. This is true. Um, sound just kind of working and not having to futz around with like Alsa or A Play or Pack, whatever that yeah. thing was. But uh, th- and th- this brings this wonderful piece of technology to a well beloved game, Ski Free SDL, Ski Free SDL from Jeff One AM Studios. Links to all this stuff in our show notes. It's Ski Free. It uses the source port. Uh, and it is, it's forked from another source port. This one adds SDL, uh, does not have mouse support or sound support right off the bat, but they're, they're hoping to add that eventually. Um, but yeah, you can now, now on a modern computer, you can get stuffed into the mouth of a Yeti. Uh, well, I, I just love ski free. Like I, I played a lot of it in the waiting room of my therapist's office as a child. So I, I just have like powerful <laughs> nostalgia for it. It's just fun though. I, I played a lot of it. Yeah, as a child as well, uh, but with a mouse. So it would be nice to have that mouse support, but it is, yeah, it is all open source. So if you have the chops to make that work, give it a look. And SDL, use more SDL for things. Also, why SDL 2? Isn't SDL 3 out? Well, like, uh, but it, it's, it's, like a, it's like a lexical thing, right? Like um, SDL 2 is... Like SDL two is still compatible with SDL three. It's like it's like yes, um yes. It's, it's 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 like how uh, kernel like three point oh plus is like two point twenty seven whatever right like it's still mm-hmm. the same thing but they just like changed the numbering. You thought you could escape ski free and you can't. I, I I think at some point everybody's played this just a little bit. I, I've never played it enough to even realize that it had mount support at any point. Um. I want some things though. I mean, if you're going to go through this, like you, you got the baby steps. So here comes the random person on the internet and be like, Hey, I bet you can't do this. Hey, I bet you can't do this. Can we go can like massively multiplayer? Ski free battle Royale. Yeah. <laughs> Ski free BR. Like just from checkpoint to checkpoint. Oh my God. That would have made snow yeah, like, like ghosts, actually worthwhile playing. Like the ghost if it was like <laughs> multiplayer t- PVP snowboarding. <laughs> well, we can do the async stuff. Somebody can get the, can be the Yeti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D- Dead by Daylight, that shit, yeah. too. Watch, watch the one Ada player just, like, perfectly dodge everyone be like, oh, my God. Good Lord. That was a that was, <laughs> that was, a that was like thing a, to watch, wasn't that it? That was, like, a minute straight of just, like, perfect dodge. I, I that felt was... that, you know, we were being not rewarded, but we were blessed to be able to just, like, this Wait, is somebody is that? that does nothing but play this game. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's someone who's played that game. Every day for the past many, many years. It's like, carry us, Ada. Carry us. <laughs> and they did. We get out of yep. that in one piece. But yeah, online multiplayer, maybe some ray tracing. Uh, yeah, multi, some type of like simple multi. If somebody's looking for like next year's like summer of code project. Yeah. There you go. Something real basic. And you know what? Scattle Royale. <sighs> sure. Why not? Scatman <laughs> Royale. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still just impressed that somebody originally decided that they were going to do a decomp of Ski Free at some point. Mm-hmm. Somebody woke up one morning and was like, I chose violence, right? <laughs> um, and this thing, you know, it was compatible. Like, they did a decomp to it uh, just back to see. It was a Visual Studio. Compatible. Like, this is SDL. I built it. It's really slick. It's a CMake project, of course, but it's automated to get the resources that you need because, yes, you need this you, has you need the data files for ski for actual all, resources all um 200 kilobytes of it yeah like it builds like two sdl packages you probably don't have installed if, even if you have sdl uh, dev um set up but after that it's done it's a little executable and uh yeah it's just something fun i thought it was neat yeah I, I, I game like preservation it, it, it's not just for you know the high profile 3d games it's for those that you remember being very, very young and just sinking, if not hours, at least many, many minutes into. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to uh, hit us all over the face with your nostalgia and the games you used to play way back when, when you started playing games on Linux, we're curious. We might even talk about it here on this very show. Smash that contact button. 
fill out the contact form, which works again. I meant to talk about that at the beginning of the show because I did some stuff with some DNS security things. And to like Thursday, if you sent a message, it didn't work. So you might want to resend that. Pick the right show. All we need is an email. And this all stays on our server, so you don't have to worry about it going off and getting sent to anybody. Leave a YouTube comment, Patreon post, uh, leave a comment on that. If you get a question, you know, it's all fair game. You hit me on the social media, you hit us in Discord. Don't expect that to show up on the show because Squirrel, we, we're not going to remember to uh, get back to that. So yeah, email's always a good shot. Last week, while Pedro was busy being dead, um, somebody asked about gaming distribution. So before we even get to it, Pedro, is there a place for like gaming distributions in uh, 2023? We didn't, we didn't get a chance to, you know, you being deceased at all. That's the thing. I read the show notes and they were asking about the worst mm-hmm. distro for gaming. We're going to get to that, but I want your take on is there a place, which I discussed I, before we got to that last yeah. week, for a gaming distribution in 2023. There is, there, there absolutely is, um, if not a, like a dedicated place, then uh, a niche Let's call it that. Uh, for people who want to just have that one distribution that they will install and everything will work and it'll have and Bunter, reasonably yeah. up to date drivers and everything like <laughs> no bar. <laughs> or um, you guys brought up um, <laughs> a gen to, to some degree. Um, Sabayan, which was the, I don't know if it's still actively maintained, but that was Is like the... Is it Sabayan or Sayaban? The Sibian. Yeah, I've seen that. The, One the, of the those. Sibian, the Sibian? Sibian. Yeah. <laughs> Sayaban, Sabayan, that, that one. Hi, Hi, basically, Saban's Power Rangers? Probably yeah. runs embedded Linux, so be quiet. <laughs> Do you think the Megazord uh, runs the, Linux? Uh, <laughs> easy Maybe. version of uh, Gen 2, as it were. But it is... There absolutely is, if not a need, then there absolutely is a, a oh niche. Sa- Sa- Sabaton Linux. <laughs> oh, that's Sabaton. a yeah. That, that's a great Beastie Boys song about the. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm telling you all, it's Sabaton. Yeah. Sabaton. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so is it Sabayan? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so Claudio, Claudio writes in, uh, and they say corporate distributions like Red Hat are the worst for gaming. It's not minimal impact. It's very difficult to get their libraries, so sub- subsystems, kernels, and the likes to properly do gaming. So I saw this, and I, I thought to myself, yeah, maybe maybe if you're talking about, like, Red Hat 6. But even Red Hat 7 is based off of, like, Fedora 15. And a lot of the games on Steam right now, they're targeting, like, Ubuntu 12? So... Uh, so, like, okay. I, don't, I don't... Red Hat I don't 7, know. I would give it... I would put that in the spectrum of, like, you're saying there's a chance. There, 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 there's a chance. CentOS eight, absolutely, you could get shit running, modern shit running. On. Oh yeah, that, that, that's <laughs> that's not that's not up for debate. So, um, but um, and like, yeah, sure, I don't recommend like installing Sled as your gaming distribution. <laughs> although I don't recommend installing like Suze. But like, I don't, I don't know. And you throw you throw you throw Kurt Angle into the mix. You throw Wine in there, and like Wine abstracts a lot of like compatibility issues just out of there. If mm-hmm. you can, if you can just run Wine, you can run most games. Now, do you think this uh, you like hits differently running. though? When you okay, now this comes down to a very different thing of like with older distributions. The three of us, mm-hmm. not a problem. Like, oh, I need to, in your case, download and compile a new version of Mesa. But if you're in the position of like, I'm not capable of doing that, nor do I have the will and the drive. Linux sucks. Um, but are but then you paid the licensing fee for a copy of Red Hat? Question mark. No work did. Work did. Yeah, <laughs> they they just gave me the CDs and I brought them home and I installed oh, them and, and installed them on my, on my on my Alienware gaming PC. It came on forty thumb drives because they got it, the thumb drives off Amazon. <laughs> yeah, well, I, and it's it's not even that they're like split up across all those thumb drives. Mm-hmm. It's just one of them is bound to have the installer on it. Right. You just got to like brute force it one at a time. But that's the thing, like. Um, you guys talked about last week. Uh, I don't think either of you mentioned the fact that, okay, the worst gaming distro that you can actually have is one that things don't work properly on. So I'd make the argument that Hollow ISO 
is the worst gaming Ooh, distro you spicy. can recommend to anyone. Because, yes, it is technically the OS that comes on the Steam Deck, but the OS that comes on the Steam Deck is very much tied to that hardware. Everything is set up expecting those APUs so, and those controllers and those touchpads. So would you it's put not, your money where your mouth is? Would you, would you, to conclusively prove that Hollow ISO is the worst gaming distribution, would you mainline it for two weeks? We, do, we don't need more anecdotal evidence when we have mainstream media going, I tried Linux gaming and it was shit, and then you le- read the article, it's like, oh, they installed I, uh, all ISO and nothing worked properly. Well, no shit, Put Sherlock. your money where your mouth is, Pedro. <laughs> your money. But that's the thing. I don't, I don't need to generate more anecdotal. laptop. <laughs> If, if only he had a spare computer. That boy, I have he, multiple he's in, spare he's laptops like in, in in a desert of the uh, thing is computation. I know his shit. <laughs> uh, I Steam OS works great on the Steam Deck because that's what it is tied to, and uh, we didn't mention this earlier. But it, one of the things that um, got asked by a lot of YouTubers and journalists to Lawrence Yang and the rest of the Steam Deck team was, "Where's Steam OS for PC?" And to say, yeah, the people who are working on that are currently working on the OLED version, so we need to get that out and they can go back to doing that. Then they said the priority is to get hollow, the SteamOS, the latest version, on other handhelds. Yes, that very much, that's the most business sound decision that mm-hmm. they could make. So, yeah, absolutely, get that done, but it as long as it's working on other third-party um, handhelds, that opens up the hardware significantly. So, but that's all. But that's also that's there's the double-edged sword there, right? Because one of the big draws of the Steam Deck is here is your consistent hardware performance target. Oh no no no, when, see, when, George, when, you're going right into what I was like. Does it have like the little thing like on your Samsung tablet when you unlock the bootloader when you boot it up on a non-Steam Deck? I was like, get wrecked, noob. The shit might not work, not a problem. <laughs> yeah, Fuck big, off. Big, big, old, big old scare text. <laughs> yeah, it's just like Gabe laughing, counting money. It's like no support, blinking. <laughs> no, oh, oh, it's 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 like the Den- Dennis Nedry, like, <laughs> from Jurassic Park, except it's just Gabe. But you know what? It wouldn't be terribly expensive and out of scope for like a popular, like the Asus ROG series. Like, you're like, you know what that hardware is. You could support it, but you would have that disclaimer of like, it may perform better or worse, whatever, not a problem. But I mean, you get Steam refunds, so you don't like it, just get a refund, deal with it. Yeah, but if you're supporting the ROG Ally and the INEO, the Intel one, and the INEO, the AMD one, mm-hmm. if you're supporting all of the, those different ones, that yeah. by itself means that the operating system is no longer just expecting that one APU or two now. Uh, it's expecting all of those possible variations and that will actually open the compatibility to a lot of desktops and laptops and whatever. No, and, and but, like I, the, 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 the prospect of a future where like Steam OS is a viable platform for gaming, but like, like uh, to, compared to Windows, like that, that's exciting. But even the yes. EU doesn't believe that shit's going to happen. <laughs> Do you think in another two years we're going to get like the Steam, Le- Steam Deck Broled? Or I don't, I don't know. No, 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 no. That's not how RGB works. It's going to be the Steam Deck MOLED. MOLED. Ah, yes. The MO Steam Deck. <laughs> what they need is enough RGBs in there and like a, a strobe thing so you can have like an emergency mode to like scare off enemies. Oh, yeah. I know. If you get lost in the woods with your Steam Deck, it just like creates a beacon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really so 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 it, it just starts playing Darude Sandstorm and like just lights up and like, yes, yep. let's go. Dude, I, I would pay money for a mode for that. I, I, I want rave mode. mode. Absolutely. <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this week's Linux Game Gas Weekly. So uh, I'm going to click this. Are we going to get outro music, maybe? Hmm. I don't know. There Sounds it is. Like it. <laughs> Sorry for being a little extra scratchy this week, but I held together, and so did these two yahoos. Give them a big pinky toe together. But if you want to get in touch with me, you can always find me at Vin Stone. I'm over on the zitters. I'm at Vin on our federated timeline. If you're into that, mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm always in our Discord. If you're a patron or Twitch sub, link that up. Come say hi in our super secret Discord. 
But as always, our live show is uh, linked in our Discord with Twitch and IRC. So if you're around, you know, tell us about your favorite soup. I'm Jordan. You can find me in this space on the planet of the mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm at Frojo there, or I'm at the Burning Fool on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to discuss the uh, particularities of uh, attempting to game on distributions that are absolutely not meant Long for it, term there's a number of contracts. <laughs> <laughs> Temple the, the, OS there's a number of points I could make about possible? that, so shout at me on uh, Mastodon that's unaccounted for with the actual number for at mass.linuxgamecast.com it's yeah eh. temple deck don't use right. a, just Credit don't up. use a hollow ISO oh, geez. <laughs> calm, calm down it's it's round on I, I, either, uh, either side and high in the middle I got there I figured it out <laughs> god damn it <laughs> ah well it's that time of the week again where we Ugh. venture into the vacuum, scream into the void at our advisors, Omega Sartharin, and our executive producers, Barbara M. Scott Show, to Tom McCass, Mike G. Drummer, Tomas, Hakeem, David, Eshep, and Ian, and our Lil Nick fan, Super Death Stout, Empty, Glorious Egg Roll, and Noobs. <laughs> See monsters, Renoa, Rider X, Ma uh, Rider X, Machina, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin, Nubbin, Darkwing, System Team, Denzing Joe, Ogi One, and Kyrilla, and many death notes like Doom 2.1, Nova, Vine, Piper, Aromatic Dev, Barco, Oil of Hoop, uh, Dodger, Ball of Hoop, and many, many more. <laughs> like Jack, Strider, Ball of Pediatko, Hoop, and uh, uh, big, big thank you to thank you. Uh, all of the uh, fine upstanding edibles people who picked up <laughs> stuff on our wish list go check that out uh, we got a support button over there and uh, you'll end up on this whole thing back here look look ah uh, next to frank okay are we good shiny all the shilling has been <laughs> done and completed until next week everybody uh tell us how you're enjoying your playstation portal tm remote player because you can tell us the Sony product by the name alone that if everybody Five dudes. <laughs> <laughs>